This week on the show, we have Canadian actress Umberly Gonzalez, who stars in the Netflix series Ginny and Georgia. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of always investing in yourself. The reality is we invest our time and energy on scrolling on social media, watching TV, looking at celebrity news, but how much time do you invest in your most precious asset? You. Investing in yourself constantly, whether it's taking care of your body by going to the gym and eating healthy, or taking time for personal development by learning, is essential in evolving into the best version of yourself. Successful people are committed to investing in themselves on a daily basis because they understand that their investment in themselves is key to be more productive, happier, healthier, and smarter long-term. Make your mission today to commit to investing in yourself daily, whether it's taking time to listen to an uplifting podcast to get inspired, or simply by getting off social media and taking the effort to cook a healthy meal for yourself rather than ordering out. As the saying goes, you'll never go broke investing in yourself. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I want to talk about your role in Slumberland. Uh, you you play alongside uh, Jason Momoa. I did see a clip on Instagram where you guys are dancing in the parking lot, rehearsing. Yeah. Having so much fun. So let's talk about that whole experience for you and working with Jason. Uh, so cool. Honestly, that clip of us dancing in the parking lot was the first day we met. Wow. I was so nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, it's Jason Momoa. Like, I don't know what it's going to be like. This yeah. like giant, beautiful human. And I was like, oh, we're going to dance salsa. No big deal. And um, they were like, okay, so Jason's actually really busy. So like our first rehearsal, like I had been rehearsing our choreography alone um, at a studio before we brought it to him. And so the first day we rehearsed, it was actually a day that they were filming. The day they were filming the scene on the Canada Goose. So it was like all outside, all green screen. Like it was wild to see the sets. I was like, this is ginormous. And he was there in his trailer and he just came out and gave me the biggest hug. And he was so kind and so warm instantly. Like, we're so happy to have you here. And we were able to like show him the choreography and we practiced it. And that's the video that our choreographer, uh, Melissa Mitro, uh, took of us. And I was like, I can't wait to post this. Cause like from that to the screen, and how it translated but like honestly he is so down to earth so kind um what i learned from being on that set is that you know he really inspired me that like no matter how big or how many people know you kindness really goes a long way wardrobe provided by h and n next on the show we have canadian actress umberly gonzalez who starred in breakout roles such as the netflix series Ginny and georgia to slumberland alongside jason momoa humberly thank you so much for being on the show today how are you doing I'm so excited to be here. That definitely just happy to chat about all things acting and the shows and uh, big smiles all around. And I love Ginny and Georgia. I actually watched both seasons and I love your character. But before we get into that and all your success, let's talk a little bit about you and when you developed your passion for acting. I know that you got a taste of acting in theater when you were in high school and you also went to the National Theater School in Montreal. So let's talk about that milestone period in your life. Yeah, I mean, so I started going to high school in Aruba. I did half wow. of grade nine while I was living there. It's the island where I learned English. And I mean, that in itself changed my life because learning a new language opened up so many doors to music, to art, to movies, shows. So halfway through grade nine, it was like literally January 2007 and my family and I emigrated to Canada. And not just Canada, Fort McMurray, Alberta, which I don't know if you know anything about Alberta, but it's really cold, it's really far north. Uh, Fort McMurray itself is a very small town. It's so far north that you see the Northern Lights every night. And I mean, that in itself was such a culture shock for me to go from a Caribbean culture to <laughs> living in a... <laughs> yeah. I had never seen snow in my life. I had never felt the cold. It was incredible how life-changing that was but i was so happy because it meant a new beginning for my family and i more opportunities and within that opportunity it meant that i could pursue something that i never thought was possible which was acting i mean i always did it as a hobby i grew up dancing and singing in latin american culture there's just so much 
like lively it, it's it's lively with music and art and dancing so for me it was kind of second nature to to perform i just never thought that i would have the possibility to pursue it professionally and then have it be my full-time job so when i moved to canada learning about the fact that people actually went to acting schools like post-secondary it blew my mind i was like wait so you can just like go act all day long and they're like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I yeah. want to do that. And I, I, you know, I did high school theater and community theater in Alberta. And that's really what uh, kind of allowed me the confidence and, and pushed me forward to audition for the National Theater School in Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really the, the beginning of something that was more solidified than just a hobby, me singing in my room alone or like performing for my parents' friends. Like yeah. it just became a bit more real that hey, you can actually do this, so maybe you should try. And I had a lot of people be like, hey, you're you're super talented. I think you have a shot. Like, you should audition for the school. You should do this. You should continue. I just had a lot of people say, like, don't quit. You shouldn't just leave this. And that meant a lot to me because, I don't know, I mean, I didn't grow up with that mentality. I thought I had to, like, be a doctor and an engineer like my dad. But instead, I had so much support around me, even from my parents, encouraging me to follow my artistry and my passion. So that was life changing for me, honestly. Yeah. That was a big aha moment of like, wait, if they believe in me, maybe I should believe in me too and, and go for it. Mm -hmm. I totally understand that mindset. My dad is an engineer as well. <laughs> there you go. You know, I'm like immigrants, people of color, like yeah. I have a real job, but I don't know. There was something about when we moved that my dad was like, I want you to be happy and, and do something that none of us could have ever done growing up. And that meant a lot to me, you know, to have their support and their belief in me. And my dad came to every little show and he would cry every single time. And they're, they're just so lovely because they were like, we just want to see you like shine. And I was like, OK, I'll do it. <laughs> what was your first major audition that you remember and how did you prepare for it? Oh, man. OK, so, you know, at the start of a career, nothing is just as like perfect and simple. I actually used to be quite like a nervous and anxious actor because I had never really auditioned before. Mm -hmm. And it was that was so new to me. Theater is what was my training, but I never really had any um, any uh, professional like or training, I guess, in film. It was only when I moved to Canada and then I got my first agent that I started auditioning for film and like putting myself on self tape, even like mm -hmm. setting up the, the light, the phone, the tripod. I was like, this is so foreign to me. I'm just used to like an audience and a script and rehearsal. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, uh, I actually auditioned for Riverdale for Veronica. Mm -hmm. And I was so nervous though. I was so not ready for this. I got like pretty far into that process, but I definitely psyched myself out and like completely choked. Like I just remember feeling so overwhelmed because that could have been life changing. I mean, Camila Mendes who ended up uh, getting the role. We were kind of like in the same path, you know, neither of us had done anything major um, since we got that audition. So like you can see her career trajectory and like mine, which is also very different, still successful, but not at that level. And looking back, I'm, I'm almost grateful that mm. it, it wasn't just that, that I didn't just start off with a major show that I didn't have the experience to showcase my best chops i guess like yeah. i learned so much from like starting small and like taking bigger bites and bigger bites and bigger bites as i went along but oh man auditioning for me was hard like i showed up and i freaking owned it but <laughs> man, the nerves and the anxiety ate me up inside like there were times that i was like do i need to go to the bathroom and throw up <laughs> yeah Got some water you know like yeah. it was it's overwhelming no one can prepare you for what it's like to audition in person yes you have so much pressure on yourself there's the expectation the the desire to book the job the there's so much writing on that and it's just you like mm -hmm. are you ready show up do it and i was like <laughs> yeah, no, I can totally relate. I mean, self tapes, I feel like are easier because you could do it. <laughs> you don't have an audience. But when you go to in person auditions, I've, I've done them and they're very nerve wracking, especially if the, you know, they ask you to do something that's maybe not part of the script, like something spontaneous, like dance or say something. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, that's my job. <laughs> yeah, I've had times where I've just been so nervous. I, I've been, I psych myself to do well and I get there and I'm like, 
I don't think I could do this. So, I, you know what? But everything happens for a reason, and your time was later. So, you know, it all worked out for you. And I want to talk about your versatility in this industry. You've done voiceover work. I know you also did body motion capture for video games. So, so let's talk about how important do you think versatility is in this industry? I think it's really important because how would one know what you're capable of if you don't try something different, a yeah. new challenge, a new a new milestone? And for me, you know, I said yes to a lot of things I didn't have any experience mm -hmm. in. But what I did have was uh, this conviction that I could learn on the job and that I was going to do my very best. I'm very open to criticism, to guidance. And so when the different kinds of jobs came around, I was just like, heck yes like let's go for it i mean I'm, i wasn't even nervous in the way that i didn't think i was capable it was just uh you know maybe it was going to take a little longer or maybe they weren't going to be impatient with me if i didn't get it right away but i never encountered that if anything i had a lot of people be very supportive and um i literally learned so much of what i know now on the job and the only way that you can do that is by people taking a chance on you and there were a lot of people who did take a chance on me because even if I showed up and I faked it till I made it, um, I, I still applied myself so much. I tried to learn as much as possible, as quick as possible. I took it very seriously. And so the versatility comes from my curiosity to learn about it. I mean, motion capture was something I wanted to do from the very beginning. When I was at National Theatre School in Montreal, we had a, a bit of like a collaboration with Ubisoft and we spent like five days in their studio wearing the suits, doing like mock auditions with scripts they had from previous video games. And I was like, I had no idea that it was actors and their voices in these games. I thought it was all animated. Mm -hmm. When I found out it was actors and I found out that it was so similar to theater because there was a lot more like rehearsal process. There's no sets, no makeup, nothing. You're just there with your skills and your creativity. I loved it. And as soon as I got my agent, I was like, I really want to do video games. Just so you know, yeah. like that's a huge milestone for me. I've never done it in my life, but I know that I could I could do well. Mm -hmm. And and I did like my first video game I booked in 2016. That was like a year after I had been in Toronto. So it was really exciting. And then from that, like I learned a lot about voiceover and I did a lot of commercial work. So it was like, you know, I was singing and I was dancing and it all, I was like, you know, why do I need to be one sided? Why do I need to be really good at one thing? Why can't I spread myself? Because yeah. it means I can, I can add to my toolkit and use all of those skills for different roles. It just, it becomes more expansive. And I think it's the biggest part for me is, um, I don't get bored of what I do. Mm -hmm. I, I get to try new things all the time and to have the versatility of different things. What a gift, you know? Instead of being in one show for seven years, the last seven years of my career have been just like all over the map. And mm -hmm. so I'm just like, whatever you throw at me, I'm gonna say yes to and try. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important for people to hear is to be versatile and not to, you know, just have tunnel vision and if you want to be an actor, that's it. There are so many different aspects in the industry and saying yes to every opportunity leads you to bigger things in the future. I know even for me, I took voiceover work, I do commercials and it led me to different opportunities. So I like that you said yes, because I think that's really important because it leads you to where you want to go eventually, right? It's not a straight line. So I, it I really isn't career is so non-linear. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are steps that you can take forward that there's maybe like a bit of a roadmap, but there's no guarantee that that's going to be the success yeah. story. I think it's about taking risks, being courageous and, and not letting fear win and saying yes. Cause like literally, what do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. You don't get the part, you don't get the job. Okay. Move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. No means next opportunity. That's what I think. When I get a no, I'm oh, like, I love oh. that. Yes. Yeah. When someone says no, I'm like, I'm too determined to take that as an answer. So I'm going to yes. just keep trying. And I, I want to talk about some of your first roles. I know some of your first roles were Killer High and The Dark, which is quite different from the roles you have now on Ginny and Georgia and even on Slumberland. So let's talk about how was it playing these darker roles for you? I'm curious. You know what? Like Killer High, even though it was a horror movie, it was also comedic. And in the dark, it was a drama, but it was also my very first queer role. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there was a bit of a pattern in that, that it's like, okay, there's like comedy, there's representing the community. There are these like aspects of my personality that were being brought out of me um, without me even asking for it, which led to these roles now that I think prepared me to dig deeper into those roles. 
But I remember booking Killer High and that was like my first like lead, like number two on the call sheet. And I had so much fun. I mean, it was like, she was fabulous. She wore heels. She played this kind of like frenemy type thing from like enemy to friends fighting. There was a lot of blood. Like I love horror. So like seeing the behind the scenes of something that adventurous, um, I learned a lot from, from that project and the team was amazing. So supportive. I had so much fun shooting it. And honestly, from the very first projects that I was ever on, I felt like I was just meant to be there. And I didn't necessarily have this imposter syndrome of like, oh no, did they make the wrong choice? Are they choosing the wrong person? If anything, I was like, I really hope I can make them proud. And in turn, that shines a light on me, like I'm doing my best and hopefully that's good enough for them. And it always seemed to work out. But you know, my, my actual first like big-ish role in like a big production was Orphan Black. And that was like the turning point for me. Cause I was like, wow, it means that I can do big projects. They believed in me. I did two episodes on the last season and it was, I mean, that was a huge show and yeah. I had to play older and they weren't sure that I could play the part because they thought I was maybe too young and pretty for it because I had to play a mom and she was pregnant and grieving. Mm. But, you know, when, when people talk about darkness and like things like that, I just remember uh, one of my mentors in school told me, it's like, don't let people box you in. They're going to see you and say, oh, you're pretty. You're going to play like the love interest, girl next door, this like light and charismatic person. But they were like, you have depth and you can be ugly and not ugly in a negative sense, but like to be vulnerable, to mm. be open. Mm -hmm. Don't let people box you in and put you in this category. Like you have depth. So make sure that you're coloring outside of the lines and don't let people tell you that you're just one one sided. And I really appreciated that because even though I'm a very like positive, like bubbly person, I actually really love the darker characters. I like the strong characters, the characters that have trauma and a chip on their shoulder and they're kind of sassier and like more closed off and they have like a journey to come out of their shell. Um, I thrive in those. So I feel like I've been able to play such different characters and they all, like, I've learned a lot from all of them. Mm -hmm. I love um, Orphan Black, by the way. I've interviewed Tatiana Maslany several yes. times and she's so she's so down to earth and so nice uh, when you meet her in person, but then on screen, she's such a fierce actress and it's amazing. And I like that, you know, you're so versatile in this industry. You're playing darker roles, you're playing all kinds. You even played some LGBT roles. And I, I love your fearlessness to step into these characters and, and really, really dive into it without caring what anyone thinks. So I, I commend you for it. I think that's been part of your success in this industry. Like a connection to my characters and myself, I think they're all mirrors of me in one way or another um, because they all come from me. There's a little part of me in all of them. Mm -hmm. And before we talk about the success of Ginny and Georgia, I want to talk about your role in Slumberland. Uh, you you play alongside uh, Jason Momoa. I did see a clip on Instagram where you guys are dancing in the parking lot, rehearsing, yeah. having so much fun. So let's talk about that whole experience for you and working with Jason. Oh, so cool. Honestly, that clip of us dancing in the parking lot was the first day we met. Wow. I was so nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, it's Jason Momoa. Like, I don't know what it's going to be like. This yeah. like giant beautiful human and i was like oh we're gonna dance salsa no big deal and um they were like okay so jason's actually really busy so like our first rehearsal like i had been rehearsing our choreography alone um at a studio before we brought it to him and so the first day we rehearsed it was actually a day that they were filming the day they were filming the scene on the canada goose so it was like all outside all green screen like, it was wild to see the sets i was like this is ginormous and he was there in his trailer and he just came out and gave me the biggest hug and he was so kind and so warm instantly like we're so happy to have you here and we were able to like show him the choreography and we practiced it and that's the video that our choreographer uh, Melissa Mitro uh, took of us and I was like I can't wait to post this because like from that to the screen and how it translated but like honestly he is so down to earth so kind um what I learned from being on that set is that, you know, he really inspired me that like, no matter how big or how many people know you, kindness really goes a long way. He came in every day with his music. He said hi to everybody, knew everybody by name, made everybody feel so comfortable and so seen. And I really admire that because at the end of the day, like we're all human. There's no like superiority complex. No one is be beneath you. And that is exactly how I want to treat other people. And whenever I'm leading sets like that, I really want to include everyone in that experience without them feeling like they're any less. 
and he made everyone feel that way including me who you know we just had that one moment of like two days of literally shooting this dancing and other rehearsals but you know he was so generous with his time and his words and i really appreciated that Mm -hmm. I think that's so important to be authentic and kind no matter what. I've interviewed so many different celebrities and the ones that stick out in my mind are the ones that were really nice, really humble, down to earth, talk to all of the media, even though they're as big as they are. Um, and it really sticks with you when someone has that kindness and they're such big actors or actresses um, and they have, you know, they're so humble. So I think that's really important. So I like that you said that about him. <laughs> and fast forward, let's talk about your role on the Netflix show, Ginny and Georgia as Sophie. Tell us a little bit about your character and also could we possibly see Sophie back on season three? Gosh, what a role. Like, honestly, this came into my life and like, it was so fast and the audition was like the same night I got it, the same night I taped it, the same night that I sent it away and like I forgot about it and when it came back I honestly like we don't get to read scripts, all I got was like two tiny scenes, I didn't get much on like who the character was, what her journey in the show would have been, it, I thought it was going to be like only a couple episodes and that's that, like I literally had no idea that the show would have this much of an impact that it was going to be this good. I mean, I, I love being in it, but if I wasn't in it, I would be just a big a fan. Like the writing, the themes, like it's just amazing. Um, and I never know if Sophie's going to come back or not. I had no idea what her storyline was going to be in like in season two. I have no idea if, if and what the storyline is in season three, because truly the creators could take the story anywhere. I mean, they could go to the past, they could go to the future, they could stay in the present. Um, all I know is that I know the team really loves me and my work and I will always be happy to say yes to come back, even if it's for one episode, just to be like, love you guys. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like, would I want to explore more into Sophie's past or character? Absolutely. I feel like there's so much we don't know about her, but I'm so grateful for that storyline. And I think it's really important for people watching a, a queer love story in the way that it unfolded without questions, without anything. It's like a beautiful love story and heartbreak that it's like so human. And I was able to bring that to life. And it was very healing for me too. I was just like really so present within that and like, I love that it gets to just exist forever. Mm -hmm. And you guys are really united as a cast. I saw little clips of you guys all having fun and dancing. And, and you know, we had Nikki Ramel on the show last week and she was so excited to know that you were gonna be on the show this week. And it's yeah, great to see all the support. You guys support each other. Totally, I mean, it, it's so rare. You know, there are so many jobs that you take and you, you're in and out and then maybe you will see them again or not. But there's something about this group specifically that I feel like we did go out of our way to hang out with each other and hang out with each other, like keep in touch, invite each other to things, especially in season one when it was pre-COVID and there were no rules in how we got to hang out with each other. Like we used to go out all the time and we had parties and karaoke and dinners. And um, I had never experienced uh, necessarily a whole ensemble like that. So it was really special. And also I think everyone is so freaking talented. Like I'm just so excited to cheer them on in whatever they do moving forward. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And you know, as a girl coming from Toronto, Canada, Montreal, and then going to Hollywood, if you can name three traits that you think has made you successful and stick out in this industry, what, what would you say they are? Oh my goodness. Um, perseverance is probably the first one that comes to mind. Mostly because, I mean, that to me means like, I was always very persistent in what I wanted. and. That really requires the understanding that you're gonna have challenges, there's gonna be obstacles, there's gonna be opposition, but despite that, I'm still gonna keep going. And making that choice is probably like one of the most important ones in this career because yes, people might say the stocks are, uh, the odds are stocked against you. Um, you know, it, it's like one in a million that you're gonna make it or, you know, make it to Hollywood and be this thing, but like in acting, like, I feel like if it's your passion, you have to go for it, regardless of fame or not. It's not about that. It's like, if you get to do what you love and you get to pay your bills or some of your bills, or at least have it as a side gig, like, I think it's still worth it. I feel so grateful that it became my full-time job and I, I found as much success that I did. My conviction, like I was so persistent in it. Like once I knew 
that this career was a possibility, there was just no looking back for me. I went full in. Like I literally didn't put any eggs in any other basket. They're all in this career. And so I had to be persistent. So perseverance and that despite challenges is a big one for me. Um, uh, I guess I would say my individuality, like my autonomy, uh, that's something I learned like halfway through the past, like it's been like 10 years for me in a way, like in this industry since I started professionally. And I think autonomy is a, is a big one because yes, it's like making decisions for yourself, like self-governing, but not just that is like allowing myself the freedom to be myself mm -hmm. without judgment, without comparison, without thinking like, oh, I'm doing this for somebody else. Like I needed to learn how to validate myself mm -hmm. so that I'm not looking for external uh, like reassurance because it's really hard in this industry to look at everybody else and not be like, wow, why are they succeeding? Or like, why I'm not getting that? The second I realized that like me, like my uniqueness is when it's my superpower in this. And I remember very specifically, it was after I graduated from the Canadian Film Center, like back in 2018, that program changed me because it gave me autonomy. It gave me the ability to be like, I do not need anybody else to tell me that I'm good enough. I can do that for myself. And I found a lot of self-worth and that allowed me to gain so much confidence that anywhere I walked into, regardless if I was nervous or not, I was always going to bring myself because there's nobody else out there like you. Mm -hmm. The way that I love, the way that I laugh, the way I hate and fight and, and all of these qualities that make me me are what, what's gonna get me those jobs because if that job is meant for me and they're looking for a character that has any of those traits i get to show up authentically as that so that autonomy like really ties everything in together for me to know not necessarily who you are completely because i don't know that we are ever going to know exactly who we are but i know what i'm capable of and i know my craft and that that is what like keeps me going truly. I know that no matter if I'm not as prepared or not the right person, I could be so myself and be wrong for the part, but they can never take that away from me because it's me. So that's a big one. And what's yeah. the last one? Uh, <laughs> probably patience. I mean, yeah, patience. We want so many things as artists. We have dreams. We want so much and there's no guarantee that we're going to get it in a year, in seven years, in 10 years, in 20 years. But practicing patience in the times where I think I deserve something right now, but it's not coming right in the second. It allows me to be present in my life. And what I mean by that is knowing who I am outside of my career. It's really easy to think that my entire identity um, is just being an actor. I think it, it's all consuming for sure. Being an artist, like I think you don't go a day without doing something towards your art or, or showing up or whatever it is, but being patient in the times that it's lower or the times that there's transitions or change. Practicing patience and being present allows me to be grateful for where I am in the journey. And therefore I can kind of find like just more peace. And, and it's like having faith in the fact that like things will work out and things will come my way because I am aligned with where I'm at right now rather than desperately chasing the thing like I want to attract it and the only way I can do that is by being exactly where I am just mm -hmm. because I have it doesn't mean that they're not going to come true it's just that I have no idea when they're going to happen but if I'm present and aligned with who I am right now and I'm patient with myself then all of those things will lead to each other a lot like alongside the perseverance and my autonomy and being patient I think that's like the trifecta of like okay I can just be ready for when the opportunity comes I know who I am, I know what I offer, I'm being patient and I will not give up. Here I am. Yeah, I think that's all very insightful and great advice. I love that you said, you know, about like stepping into your authentic self and not having your, not having to compare yourself to anyone else. Cause I know even for me, um, people always ask me like, how are you so confident in this industry? And it's because I don't compare myself to anyone. As you said, you're, you being you is your superpower. I know there's no one like me. I know no one can compare in terms of who I am and what I bring so I love that because when you do step into your into your authentic self you don't compare yourself to others amazing things happen and you have this self-confidence that is so it's it really comes from within and you become unstoppable I almost feel because you're not going to take no for an answer because that your self-worth and validation comes from within so I love that I think that's really powerful advice and 
it's it's easy to say, but it takes a little bit of work, right, to develop. Now, don't get me wrong. You see me as I stand here as this confident woman because I have done so much work to get here. At the start, yeah, I was a mess. I I didn't think that I had what it took. I am like a queer ESL immigrant Latina. Like I never saw myself represented on screen the way that that I wanted to show up. You know how how could I know if I had I was even going to be given a shot to try to be the lead in something or to to literally share my story. So I knew that the, I, I would also have to be a pioneer. I had to do things without knowing if someone tried it before. I mean, for me, there was a lot of firsts. But I loved what I do so much that I, I honestly, my mentality is like, I have nothing to lose and so much to gain. So I might as well say yes and and try. And when I was heartbroken and things failed. I have a community around me. I have my team who's so supportive. I have people who can lift me up once again cuz, you know, there's nowhere to go but up when you're feeling down. So, I definitely had my moments and I still have my struggles. I just don't let like those struggles be at the forefront cuz there's so much I could be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, of, of uplifting, I feel that you know I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, and to showcase success stories like yours. That anything is possible when you put your mind to it. So, you know, how did you overcome failure and rejection in this industry? What did you do personally to kind of get through those obstacles and stay focused? Yeah, it wasn't easy. You know, nobody can prepare you for the amount of no's that you get in this industry. And so I had to really change my mentality because it isn't that you're being rejected. You're just not the right person for that part. Out of the hundreds of auditions, you might book one or two. And we audition a lot as actresses if you're lucky and what a gift to audition to be being said yes to even through that process because there's so many people who get submitted and they still don't get auditions. So I feel very grateful that I've gotten the chance to put myself out there and what helped me honestly like my team my first agent here in Canada she was so hands on with me I'm not going to lie I definitely have showed up crying to her office thinking that I was going to be the girl who was pinned who got called back who was always second choice but never the one chosen cuz I went through a period of that and I literally showed up crying being like this is excruciating because I want it so bad and like they hate me she was like I really know like The reality in this industry is that we plant seeds and you can you can't reap what you sow right away. You are planting seeds that they're seeing you. If they're saying yes to you and you're going out and auditioning and putting yourself out there, they see something in you. Them saying no is they're not saying no to you specifically because you're not good. It's because you're not the right person. Imagine them having a project and finding the right person like I can't say yes to everything and I can't be everything. but i know that what is mine will not pass me and i had to learn that and that really allowed me to let go i think learning to let go and surrendering in this career is like you literally move like water wherever it takes you you go yep i accept this and i go with it um there's been parts that i wanted that i thought i was so perfect for and i lost out on and i didn't let that like i didn't let that allow myself to attack myself cuz i knew that is so beyond me there are things out of my control um we're emotional we are vulnerable we're human so of course we're going to take things personally but i'm really really trying to not do that because i wouldn't want to be a part of something i'm not right for and I, at the end like that's really what helps me i have to remember that there are so many people out there that deserve an opportunity and they can't all be mine and when i'm ready and i get to audition for the perfect project like it's not going to pass me And I've heard this from the things that I've booked when they're like, "Oh my gosh, when we saw your audition tape, it was you and we were so glad we found you and that you just happened to be here." And like that's so comforting to me that I'm like, "Wow, like everything that I've done so far has been so curated. I have said no to a lot of things too, and there's power in that. My manager will always say that. It's like, "You bet on yourself." And there's just as much power in saying no and saying yes because you're cur- curating your career. And I need to be aligned with what I play and the stories that I'm putting out and the the stereotypes that I'm fighting against as a Latina woman, the just the themes that I want to be a part of. So to to have some like say in that is really great now. But at the beginning, yeah, it was really hard. I I just kind of said, you know, I'm making space for what's mine, mm-hmm. and I trust. I really just had this like. 
trust that something amazing was coming. And I always have that trust. I still to this day do nothing is guaranteed. Even at this level in my career, people see me and they're like, oh my God, you're constantly working. You're doing this and that. They don't know the actual struggles behind closed doors. Uh, to, to keep growing in this career, you have to bet on yourself a lot and you have to really like be so specific about the projects you say yes and no to and they get more challenging as you grow. Um, with more power comes more responsibility. So that is definitely a fact and um, I'm in a really exciting and important part of my career right now where I'm, you know, I've, I've worked a lot in Canada. So now I'm looking forward to LA and US and I have my team in the US and I really want to go to LA. Never been in LA my entire life. Wow. Believe it or not. So there are things that I'm moving and I'm growing, but I'm so grateful that I got my experience here in Canada because if I had left any earlier, I wouldn't have been ready. And I think, again, patience comes in. We can't have it all now, but I just want to feel really ready and confident in what I can offer. And that's when the yeses come in. When you're aligned with yourself, it's like you're you're attracting it, you know? So you have to, yeah, it, it's, it's inward. You go inward. When you have rejection, you go inward and you say, I am worthy of this and I'm not going to give up. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I told myself every time. Mm -hmm. I like that you said bet on yourself. My, the intro of my show today is about investing in yourself and the importance of that. And I also like the fact that, you know, you shared your struggles. I always like to ask anyone that's on my show about the struggles and how they overcame obstacles, because I think that's so important for people to hear, especially our audience looking for inspiration, because when they hear that and they see people on the big screen, they understand that you know, how much obstacles they had to get to go through to actually get where they are. And I think that's really important so that it motivates them when they get to know that they're going to brush it off and keep going. So I love to hear that, you know, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of no's. Yeah. Like, don't let, you know, the success is one part of it, but the amount of auditions that actors have to do so much work, taking out time from your other jobs or other lives. I mean, when I started out, I had like, five different jobs and I was like trying to, to hold it all together while also giving like a hundred percent of myself to something that I didn't even know if it was going to lead anywhere but mm -hmm. the betting on yourself is a big one because at the end of the day I, I still think it's worth it because yeah. it's what I love and there's no way I'm going to lead my entire life without trying and, and doing what I love like I know I'm a performer at heart and I want to inspire other people to follow their passion too because it is possible. Not easy. No one literally said it was easy. People say this. I'm like, I didn't say that. I just said that once I saw that there was a possibility that I could do this, I just took it. Yeah. And that what you do with that possibility is up to you. Absolutely. It's not easy, but it's worth it. That's the main thing. Yeah. It will be yeah. worth it. And it will pay off. And Humberly, what are you currently working on? What are your current projects? Ah! Okay, so I actually, uh, I was in Europe last year for a few months filming a Sony Pictures movie. Um, we don't have a trailer or anything yet, but Deadline did announce that it's called Horoscope. Um, it was an incredible experience. My first international project, my first Sony Pictures, like big studio picture movie. Uh, so it was really exciting, huge challenges. I learned so much from that. And I've been working on another project for the better part of a year, but I cannot talk about it because they will come for me. <laughs> um, however, we will be able to announce it in a few months. And this project is probably the biggest thing I've ever done and Ooh. the most challenging, amazing thing that I've been a part of. I love this team so much. I'm having a blast and I cannot wait to share it. Um, you know, this career surprises me over and over and over again um, when one door closes so many more open and I really experienced that last year because I was close to a project that could have been so life-changing and when I didn't get it I was like oof okay it stung a little but I did not crumble into myself instead I made space for what's to come and then it was like boom boom these two projects that were also things that I wanted came to me and I was like you know that could have gone two ways I could have I could have felt really bad about myself and thrown myself a little pity party and been like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm never going to get that. Or I could say, I'm so proud of myself for getting that far. It means that I am up next for something that big and that important. And so I'm going to grieve about it a little bit and then I'm going to wake up the next day and just keep going. And there you go. Like opportunities came again. So yeah, I, I've had a lot of lessons uh, the past few years with COVID and like obviously the challenges through that, but I've been able to work through that and 
I'm so excited. Like, who knows what's going to come uh, this year? Mark my words, I will be in L.A. I will get to go there for the first time and see those freaking palm trees and the Hollywood <laughs> sign. I hike up and have a big cry. And like, that is like one of, I mean, maybe every actor's dream to to get to L.A. and be able to like have a team there and feel supported there. And that's definitely the next part of my journey. I recently just got my visa to be able to work there. Oh. So like, like what I'm working towards is mostly that I am so laser focused on what is next, bigger projects, bigger challenges, but feeling so supported. I'm so grateful for my team and my community around me. I feel like um, when you surround yourself with good people who truly support you and love you, that's when you become unstoppable too. Mm-hmm. Like there's so, so much you can do for yourself, but like the people who truly see you and and just like cheer you on without jealousy without that threat like Mm. it's so unvaluable and i'm so glad that i have that now i didn't always have that so definitely like my biggest advice is like yes choosing to go into this career but also surround yourself with good people who really believe in you absolutely humberly thank you so much for being on the show today congratulations on all your success not only are you a great actress but you're also so insightful and i love that you brought a lot of insight into this interview as well so thank you and I love everything you're doing and keep up the amazing work. There's going to be amazing big things for you. (laughs) Oh, yes. Manifesting all of it. Good vibes. (laughs) Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TV, as well as an Apple and Android phone. Watch us live to YouTube and Facebook. Mm